fool. You can leave after being filled with the Holy Ghost and still be a cussing fool. You can. You can still do everything you want to do. There, the Holy Ghost does not automatically, magically make you be good. But when you start spouting that stuff, the Holy Ghost will say, Hey, we, <laughs> God help me, we don't talk like that. Me and you. Because I'm in you now. And we don't talk like that. We don't act like that. And, and, and there's some important things. It's, this is very important that you, that you try to stay with me the best you can. <clears throat> if you can't pay attention awake, just fall asleep because you still soak up a whole bunch. I, read, I, heard, I learned that in a psychology class one time in college. There are responsibilities that follow you as a Holy Ghost, Spirit of God filled man and woman here on earth. It says lay aside. That denotes an intentional action on their behalf. I don't want to do that anymore. Meaning I don't have to do this. I don't have to change. But if I want to mature and I want to be perfected in the Lord, as well as continue in the direction that I started, I've got to listen to what the Word of the Lord says. If I, if I want to keep going in this, you, you cannot just show up for church, talk in tongues like a Chinese laundry book or Chinese phone book, uh, and then walk out of here and never come back again and claim to be saved. You can't do it. There's some responsibilities. We have got to be built up. We've got to go on to perfection. Jude said, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. There's some responsibilities. There are some responsibilities. That's why He gave us the Holy Ghost. He didn't give us the Holy Ghost because we're spoil rotten brats and say we're going to fall in the floor and kick and scream. If you don't, He gives you the Holy Ghost because you believe on Him and you believe on Him not for that moment but for forever. You can't live like the devil. You cannot live like the devil counting on the Holy Ghost to pull you up out of your mess. He shall save his people from their sins. The Holy Ghost wants to get you out of your mess. That's why Peter, and you're exactly right, Brother Billy, that's why Peter's still dealing with pertinent issues on goofy stuff that I'm fixing to share with you exactly what it means is because people get the idea, well, I got the Holy Ghost and I'm in like Flynn. It don't work that way. You have a responsibility to, to grow in the Lord. He's building a church and it ain't a building. I said he's building a church and it ain't a building. It's people. You have to intentionally, intentionally say, I'm going to let go of this stuff. Look here. Wherefore, Laying aside all malice and all guile. Now in the Bible, all means all. You can't hold on to it. I remember when I was about 12 or 13, Brother Shannon might remember this. It was really Matthew's fault. This, this fellow was running off at the mouth. And he wouldn't quit. And Matthew beat the brakes off of him. And when I say beat the brakes off of him, I ain't exaggerating. He was on top of him, pounding his head in the ground. It was bad, Brother David. Now that was one of those carnal moments. I kind of thought he deserved it. And I did feel a little sorry for him after the fact. Just a little. But somehow or the other it came down that his mama was going to whoop my mama. My mama didn't even know nothing happened. She did not know anything happened. But she was fixing to get whooped. Well, I told her, I, you know, my sanctimonious self-righteous self. I told her, I said, you can't do that and go to heaven. She said, well, I'm going to do it and then repent. I'll never forget it. I was playing basketball down at the Craven's house when it happened. That dog don't hunt. 
You cannot say, I'm going to do whatever I want to do, and then I'm going to repent when I get done. You ain't repenting. You ain't repenting. You want to be bad. <laughs> now, we have to understand something. There's a difference between a fleshly motivated mistake from somebody who really desires to please God and purposeful bad behavior rooted in a desire to please the flesh. Did you follow me on that? Get the recording tonight. This is some pretty good stuff. There's a difference between somebody that wants to please God and get caught up in a fleshly mess and somebody that just purposely said, rain on it, I'm going to do it. Like it or not, I'll repent after a while. Good luck. I said, good luck. All malice. All malice. Malice is the desire to see others hurt. It's the opposite of excellence. It is badness in quality, vicious in disposition, wickedness in spite. So let me just break it down for you real plain. Holy Ghost filled people can't be acting like that. If you do, you're under the influence of the flesh and not the spirit. And the Bible says, the Lord will not dwell in an unclean temple. The Bible says you've got to let that stuff go. You've got to get rid of it. Lay it aside purposefully. And the, the thing is, Brother David, is every time, and I'm going to go through all this stuff, but every time that junk rears up in here, I know it. I said, I know it. It don't surprise me. You don't ever bless nobody out, show your, show your ignorant self and, and, and you know, blah, 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 run off at the mouth and then say, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> you know it's there. You recognize it. And Brother Larry, that's what the Holy Ghost does. Time out. Time out, walk away. You say, well, I don't know about this, this stuff. I'm telling you tonight that there's some, there's some of you that are struggling. There's some of you that are going through some stuff. We got the summertime blues. We've been having them for like a month. And we've had some throw down church. We've had some good services. And we got people traveling. We got people working. We got things all discombobulated. And, and we tend to start sliding off the carnal end. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, lay aside all malice and guile, all guile. I pray, Lord, don't let me have any guile in me. Guile is, and I'm summarizing diff definitions from several places, but guile is shadiness, manipulative and deceitful behavior, incapable of trust. And hypocrisies. That means pretense. Or I kind of came up this word myself. Chameleon behavior. You know you can be a hypocrite in the world just like you can in the church? Come on now. You come to church and you shout and dance and run all the aisles. And then you go to work and you're the number one nasty joke teller. You was a hypocrite in both places. Huh? It's it's a behavior of somebody that they just change themselves to be like whoever they're around. That ain't real. I said that ain't real. The only real you is the one you are when you're by yourself. We gotta let that stuff go. <laughs> Boy, y'all making a brother nervous tonight. Envies. Envies. Now, I'm going to dig into it just a little bit more, but if you don't really study the Bible, you're going to automatically... If I said envy, what's somebody going to say another word for envy? Jealousy. Two totally separate words mean two totally separate things. Jealousy means 
that whatever you have, I wish I had. Envy is I don't care if I got it or not, I just don't want you to have it. It's the displeasure that arises when you hear of the prosperity of others. And I, I'm, I'm going to use some real examples. It ain't really none of your business if they can afford that new truck or not. Hope they... God have mercy. Hope they can rather than hope they lose it. That's right. Because that's a worldly way of thinking. You should want your brothers and sisters to be blessed. And when they're blessed, we should rejoice with them. Don't be dogging people out all the time and stuff because you ain't got what they got. Start working harder. Start managing your, oh God have mercy. Start managing your money a little bit better. Start putting the first in the kingdom of God. Envies. Come on, we've all felt it before. Come on, when you're driving an old pickup truck like I used to drive. When you get out and shut the door real fast because the seat's got foam all sticking out of it. But you got to situate yourself every time you sit down because all the rods in the back of the seat done poke through. When the kids don't want daddy to come pick them up but they want mama to. Because all the boys know when daddy's coming when he's like five blocks away. You know what? I didn't have one person jealous of my little ranger. And I didn't have one person. I did not have one person that said, who does he think he is riding in that? But just as soon as I got me a nice pickup, which by the way, I did under duress from a lot of you folks. Because they said, brother, you need to get something nicer to drive in. I'm telling the truth. Then I had, you know what, then I look at him. I even had somebody that went around accusing me of stealing all y'all's money to buy me a new truck with. That's a fact. You know what, they, they weren't concerned with where I got the money from. They wanted me to keep driving my raggedy truck. Why? Because that's a carnal way. Oh, I'm the Holy Ghost way. I want my brother to have more. I want my sister to be blessed. I'm thrilled to death when they got some new duds for Easter. Oh, we got to lay aside that envying. We got to lay aside that envying. Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm really happy when I'm all in the book. And all, I'm going to tromp on Brother David's lessons just a little bit right now. And all, everybody say all, all. evil speaking. tell you, there's one word when you look it up in the dictionary, the Bible dictionary, backbiting. Does anybody know what backbiting is? That's talking about folks behind their back. Now, all talking about people behind their back ain't bad. Oh, oh, what do you think about that? When you're talking about it behind your back and say, boy, Sister Leanne's tearing it up. Sister Leanne's really doing good. Sister Tina, she was at church Wednesday night. And, uh, boy, she's got them girls lined out and they follow her right along. Sister Tina's doing a good job. Well, Brother Billy was able to come to church Wednesday night. I'm grateful he was able to be there. I miss him when he's not there. That's, that's all right talk about somebody behind their back. But it ain't all right to tear them down. Ever. Because the book says... All evil speakings. I'm not done yet. There's more backbiting. In case you just went, whew. 
all speaking against general contrariness of speech. Now, I'm going I'm to just dig right here for just a minute. While I was teaching on holiness of the mind, and while Brother David was teaching on holiness of speech, there was instances of Holy Ghost filled people fitting the bill right here. Yep, I just went there. Now, Sister Maria, if I had a dollar for every time I ran off at the mouth when I didn't have no business doing it, I'd buy me another new truck. Now, now don't nobody start thinking I'm self-righteous right now, okay? I don't want you to. But there are some days, Daryl, God is my witness, there are some days that I go to pray. And I get down ready to start groveling and repenting of all of my bad stuff. And you know what? I can't think of all that much. Don't listen to me now. I said I, said I can't think. Well, what's wrong with that, Brother Billy? Nothing. That's where we're trying to get. I had to get excited in here praying the other day because let me tell you something. For a whole lot of years of my life, boy, I could do some repenting. Generally had to do with this. But I get down, I pack my lunch, and I get ready to grovel. And I realize, Sister Maria, how far the Lord has brought me. How many mountains we've come over. How many valleys we come through. I'm not, I got so excited in here, and you have to just excuse me, and I know this is cliched, but I got so excited in here praying yesterday because I, I declared something in the Holy Ghost. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I've been either. I said, I'm not where I want to be. I still got some work to do, but you know what? I'm a lot closer to where I want to be than where I've been. And somebody ought to get excited in the Holy Ghost to recognize that the Lord is working on me, and I don't want to be like that anymore. I don't want to run off at the mouth. I want the Holy Ghost to check me, Brother David. Come on, it's a miserable, miserable existence to get out on Sunday night and repent of everything you've done all week. And by Monday afternoon, you done made a whole new list. I said it's miserable. But what I'm telling you is if you can lay aside this stuff. I was thinking on my way to church tonight. I was thinking on my way to church of some dumb stuff we do that doesn't fit in verse number one. Somewhere. And you know what? I can't think of anything. So if I can lay aside all of this stuff, you know what the answer is? And again, this sounds cliche. You know what the answer is? It's prayer. And fasting. And reading the Bible. And being faithful to the house of God. This section deals with the need for radical change in our relationship with others. This covers everything that we keep messing up on. Oh God, have mercy. With regard to our relationship with others. Why is it so important? Because when He gives you the Holy Ghost, the identifying characteristic of somebody that's like Jesus Christ is somebody that loves folks. Okay. And listen here. Here we go, Brother David. I'm tromping on your stuff again. But the Bible says, out of the same well come forth bitter water and sweet. These things ought not be. Out of the same mouth come blessings and cursings. What's wrong with you? Huh? That some of us have felt like we could do that and it was okay because they were mean to me. Because they said, your mama. I 
remember at the boys' ranch, I've told this before, but it's still good. They'd be throwing down, punching and fighting. I'd call them in the office, and I'd say, what did he say to you? He said, my mama. I said, does he know your mama? Nope. Ain't nobody talking about my mama. Well, what did he say? Your mama. Does he know your mama? No. Then what did he say bad about your mama? Ain't nobody talk bad about my mama. Well, the bottom line is, is what's happened right there, what's happened right there is, is they very quickly recognize they're wrong. And what's going, remember, it's in there, and guile and hypocrisies. What's happened is, is the inner man just said, boy, I'm a dummy. I just got in lockdown. I just got in trouble. Sometimes I got my tail tore up because he said your mama and he don't even know my mama. But I ain't letting Brother GL see that I think he's right. Huh? Y'all know what I'm talking about? That's a carnal mind. Brother Billy. Absolutely. Absolutely. The thing is, Brother Billy, and I started to preface my lesson with this, but I won't preface it with it. I'll bring it in right now. The thing is, if you're not living, you're dying. If you're not growing, if you're not getting stronger in the Lord, you're getting weaker in the Lord. Because that place you're talking about, well, I have you know I've been here since blah, 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 blah. That's the folks that the Bible says he will vomit you out of his mouth. Huh? I got to be aware. You know what? Brother GL, you've been preaching enough, thou shalt not. You know when I'm going to quit preaching, thou shalt not? When Jesus comes. Huh? Because you need me to tell you it is not okay for you to run people down all the time, criticize everything in the world that comes up, be jealous and envious of everybody that gets everything new. You're not representing the Lord good. You're not representing the church good. And you're not representing yourself good. Can I get an amen? Amen. And the Lord said, get rid of it. It's a radical change in our relationship with others. There's no wiggle room. There's no justification. There's nowhere where he says, if they do this to you, then you're allowed to talk bad about them. I've told you this, and it's already happened, and it backfired. I've been telling you all this for, for going on uh, in February the 27th. I will have been the pastor of this church for five years. And it's been a fast five years. But I've been telling you for most of it that as the Holy Ghost continues to move, there are going to be people that are hungry that come into this church that you were their lifelong enemy. And it's preaching like tonight. I said, it's preaching like tonight that's going to help you act like you ought to act instead of how you even want to act. I had a talk with a fella. Brother Ray overheard my conversation in the pickup truck yesterday. Somebody had done something terrible, terrible to somebody. Terrible. And I told him, I said, you got to forgive him. You have to. You don't have to invite him over for Thanksgiving dinner. You don't have to invite him to go fishing. But you got to forgive him. We got to learn to let stuff go. Amen. And the crazy thing is through our stubbornness and our pride, we want to hold on to it. Even though in our heart we know that ship has done sailed. Absolutely not. I'm going to preach on that again real soon. Sister Leanne will always remember that. Tonight she came back to church. Prayed back through to the Holy Ghost. This stuff right here is going to keep me from being saved. <laughs> 
surely in the world you don't think you can keep all this stuff. Hold on to all this stuff. Because ain't nobody talking about my baby like that. Psh. Yeah, I'm, I'm really... I'm going to be your pastor, not your preacher. Some of you just enjoy hearing me preach. Sometimes I don't know why in the world. Here the other night, I felt like I laid a complete egg. I was ashamed. I was embarrassed. And I got people texting me, best you've ever done. Shows you how ignorant I am. But I'm going to be your pastor. That's Peter's trying to be these people's pastor. Huh? He's trying to tell them, you remember, you got the Holy Ghost. And since you got the Holy Ghost, wherefore? Let turn all that junk loose. I don't want to belabor the point tonight. But the thing is, is, if you go out of here tonight and you say, well, I'm going to keep on doing that. You know what? You keep on doing that right down the sliding board to the lake of fire. Say, so, ooh wee, now you went to judging people. No, I ain't. It's the book said. <laughs> well, I feel it when it rises up in here. I do. I feel it. I ain't no dummy. I might be crazy, but I ain't dumb. I feel it when it rises up in here. Well, who does he think he is? I'm the pastor of this church. I read it again this week. Somebody reminded me of the book of Ezekiel. You hear me right now. The Holy Ghost told the Spirit of the Lord, told Ezekiel, He said, you're a watchman. And you're standing on the wall. And if I tell you to tell them something, and you don't tell them, their blood's on your hands. But if I tell you to tell them something, and you tell them, and they don't listen, their blood's on their own hands. There's a responsibility as a pastor. It ain't so you get new pickup trucks. Let me tell you something. The burden, the responsibility. I sat in my desk, in, 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 my, in my chair to, in here today, Brother David, and tried to pray for our church people. And I just felt a burden and a burden and a burden and a burden heavy down on me. And I, I, I'm, even when I begin to study this stuff, there's some carnal junk that rises up in me and say, well, they probably ain't going to listen anyway. Huh? That ain't bad. It's just human nature. But I got to preach and I got to preach truth. Because we got to let go of that stuff. And if I don't preach it, and we go about six months without preaching it, somebody's going to say, I ain't heard you say nothing about it in a long time. Can I get an amen? amen. All right. Brother David. Absolutely. Gone. But and it, that, that brings me right to my closing point. The Holy Ghost helps you recognize that. The Holy Ghost helps you recognize that. Because that stuff cannot be at home in a purified soul. Remember, your soul is your will, it's your intellect, it's the seat of your emotions, governed by the five senses. Which are sight, smell, taste, touch, and hear. Governed by the five senses. Let's stand. I got a whole lot more, but I've already kept you about an hour.